I'm sometimes asked why am I sort of so intrigued with spirals? What is it about spirals? And I think part of the answer is that I just find them beautiful. But I think spirals also make reference to the fact that you can never return to the same place again, that nothing ever does truly repeat. It goes infinitely small and it goes infinitely large. It's endless. And, you know, we sort of don't know where we came from and we don't know where we're going and we're just sort of this, you know, this, this piece of that larger picture. I'm John Edmark. I'm an artist, designer, and inventor, and I teach at Stanford University. I don't think of myself as a sculptor. Clearly, the works are sculptures of sorts, but in a sense, that's a coincidence. They're just the medium that I'm using to ask and answer questions that I'm interested in. The driving motivation of my work is a search for unusual behaviors things that, that are non-intuitive, that maybe seem impossible. Math has a kind of precision and a, a way of clarifying relationships that allows me to, to achieve some of these behaviors and patterns that I'm trying to create. I was working with, with essentially flat puzzles. I noticed that that perimeter never changed shape, it just changed in scale as you added or removed pieces. And that then led to the notion of stacking these one on top of the other and rotating them relative to each other to cause these patterns to appear in the form of sort of plateaus that could move up and down the tower. And I'm rotating it each time, I'm rotating it at 137.5 degrees, the golden angle, which is based on the golden ratio. The golden ratio is the ratio where the smaller is to the larger as the larger is to the whole. And it ends up, this is a very powerful generative ratio Anytime you create a pattern using the golden angle, you're going to end up with spirals appearing and it's actually been shown mathematically to be the, the, the best way to distribute leaves on a stem to minimize overlap. I say a leaf or a petal or a, a seed gets put out here, the next one will get put out 137 degrees around over here and the next one then gets put out 137 degrees over here and around and around and around placing these and placing these. And when that's done in that fashion, you end up getting these kinds of very evenly distributed seed heads. But the spirals are actually a symptom of this process of placing each bud 137 degrees around from the previous bud. When I was wanting to demonstrate this transforming nature of the towers, I, I decided to animate them. And, and when I animated it, I was surprised to discover that not only did it show plateaus appearing and disappearing, but there, there was this very strong sense of continuity of the plateaus moving down the tower or up the tower. About five years later, I suddenly realized, oh, what if I just keep on rotating the entire tower, not just the, not just the next level? And in fact, blooms are a, a direct descendant of a, a multi-year long sequence of explorations on these golden angle spiral geometry studies. I call them blooms because they tend to have a sense of blossoming, opening, expanding to them as they animate. When a bloom is animating, it's endless. If a plant could grow forever, it would kind of be doing that blooming behavior forever. The first thing I do is I have to create the structure for it, and that is, of course, based on uh, using the golden angle. So I, I place where the elements are going to be, and, and, then, I, and then I shape those elements. Uh, depending on what I want the behavior to be, I, I will then animate them, making them expand, making them rotate. Blooms can be filmed in two ways. You can actually run a strobe that is synchronized to the camera's film rate, or if you set the camera to use a very short shutter speed, it will behave effectively like a strobe. Because the elements of the bloom are essentially frames of an animation, if the frames aren't exactly aligned, you're going to get a non-smooth flow. The kind of the distortions and warpings that you see happening are a result of me slightly breaking the rule of rotating by the golden angle. And so they're, they're moving back and forth in terms of, of hovering around that angle, and that causes them to have this kind of, this kind of warped, distorted effect. I think my work is most successful when it evokes a sense of wonder, 
when it sort of seems to be magical. What I'm trying to achieve in my work is something that will evoke that in somebody else, that they'll say, wow, what's going on there? How is that possible?